Hey guys, Bill coming back at you again with another video. Today we are finally going to be harvesting the pink kush indoors. We'll check out the outdoor pink kush as well. She got a good haircut this week. And we'll also check out the cereal milk which we super cropped last week. And we'll also take a look at the ethos genetics that are still in solo cups. All right, guys, so lots to do today. First off, let's go check out the new grows and see how they're doing. All right, so there they are under the Mars Hydro SP3000. A beautiful little bar light, works really well. It's got a really nice spread on it. As you can tell, the entire canopy is lit up. Uh, so first off, let's take a look down here. These are white truffle blueberry muffin bubbas. Yeah, I just gave them a watering, so that's why that one's just a little bit droopy, but that'll be picked back up in an hour or so. Uh, this one here, this one was a little freaky starting out, but she seems to have grown out of that. So looking forward to see what we can produce out of these. Now these will be going into the 3x3 tent by the next video, as we are harvesting the pink kush today that's in there right now so uh, we'll transplant these by next week and have them in the three by three and above those we have the cereal milk now last week we had super cropped these because they were all different heights and uh, they've all come back with a vengeance so uh, let's take a look here I'm going to show you a picture from last week when we first super cropped so we can see here in this picture how far down some of them branches went when we bent them over uh, some of them were down pretty close to pot level. So let's check out those branches today uh, Let's check out some of those branches that were like way down there first off We'll come here to the center one here now this year This was one of the branches we had bent down We had softened the stem by pinching it and rolling it and then we bent it right down and it went further down than what we really wanted now the next day uh, they picked right back up. They were all facing the light again, and this is one week after. So let's see if we can get down here and see that branch and see what happened to it. Okay, so let's see if we can zoom in here. So there's the knuckle. That's where she bent, right there behind that little stem. And she had bent right down to pretty much to the top of the pot. She was way down here. But now as we can see, she's right back up again and she's actually the tall branch on the plant again. So was that completely useless to do that? No, not at all. So what happened when we pulled all these down, even though they're back up now, they're also, as you can see, they're also pretty close to the canopy level. It's pretty level overall compared to what it was. So what happens on a cannabis plant is your tallest branches uh, they receive a hormone that causes them to grow faster. But what happens when you lower those branches, that hormone is redistributed through the other branches that are now the tallest. So what it does is it speeds up the shorter, which are now the tallest ones, it speeds up their growth. And by the time your taller branches come back up, these are all now pretty close to the same height. So what we're gonna do now is we have everything pretty close to the same level in this tent, pretty close. That one's still a little bit shorter, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these taller branches and in a couple of days here, I am going to take, I'm gonna take some pipe cleaners and I'm gonna tie all these taller ones down. This time we're gonna tie them exactly where we want them. So that will spread out this canopy and it'll spread out this canopy and it'll also spread out this canopy, which we won't pull down as much because we still want this to be at the same height as these ones but it should almost fill this entire tent so we'll do that next week uh, let's take a look here at the heights so you can see if we pull down this area some of these main tops they'll be pretty much the exact same height as this plant so it should work out pretty good and it should really fill this entire area up and of course we'll have these uh these ethos genetics we'll have these moved by then let's check out this stem here though this one's pretty cool this is one of the other ones that we bent down. Look how it's curved. There's where we bent it, right back here. Now it creates a knuckle there, which is really tough. That knuckle is really strong, stronger than the original branch was. Uh, but we can see it curved itself back up, almost over curved here, and then had to straighten itself back out right there. So. Uh, the plant knows what it wants. It wants light and it'll bend in any direction that it feels it needs to do 
to get the light. Just wanted to give you a look at these for today. Uh, let's head outside. We're going to check out the pink kush out there. First off, I'm going to take you a few days back when it was still really bushy, and then we'll jump ahead to when I have it all pruned out. Hey guys, it is a beautiful Sunday afternoon here in Nova Scotia, Canada. And I'm just out here in the backyard taking a look at the pink kush that we have growing out here. I've noticed over the last couple of days she seems to be done her stretch. So what we're going to do is we're going to get in there. We're going to clean off some of those leaves. That canopy is so thick. we got to clean it out a little bit. we got to let that light down in there. Let that wind in through that top canopy. And uh, hopefully that should help prevent any mold or mildew issues through the flowering stage. So I'm going to work away at that. And we will see you on Wednesday with an update. All right. So it's been a couple of days since we've trimmed off the leaves. I took a pile of leaves out of here. I a five gallon bucket that was stomped full of leaves and smaller branches from the inside and uh, it really opened it up if I zoom in here you can see the other side of the green netting that's on the other side you can see completely through this plant which is what we want it we want the air to be able to flow through there uh, with no issues at all keep everything dry when it rains and when we have high humidity uh, she's looking really good She's super healthy. She's a really healthy plant uh, using the Gaia Green nutrients. And if we look here now, I just checked and I think she's only two and a half weeks of flower. So I may have jumped the gun as far as her stretching anymore, but I don't see any physical stretch on her. But usually it's about three weeks of stretch. So uh, she may stretch a little bit more, but I, I think she's done. Now let's take a look here at the buds stacking up really nice really nice stacks going on there and also if we zoom in here a little bit she is already getting frosty guys and uh, she's still got a long ways to go now the inside ones that I'm gonna be harvesting today uh, they were I believe they were 11 weeks into flower so yeah, this has a long ways to go. So I think those I think those top colas are going to be really nice. As long as we cross our fingers and uh, hope that it doesn't get too humid here. Now, as far as bugs, I don't normally have an issue with bugs outdoors at all. I haven't seen anything out here besides a, a few leaf hoppers. And even those, there's not that many of them now. Uh, it's getting quite cool in the evenings, uh, down to single digits some nights. So maybe that might speed up the uh, the maturing process. I'm not sure. But uh, anyway, she's looking really good. And here's a shot of the stalk with one of the smaller branches that I took off, uh, which I got to pick up. But uh, the stalk is so gnarly, man. I just really like the looks of the stalks. Now somebody asked me what I did with the stalk last year. I was supposed to make like a walking stick out of it. It's still leaning in my tent inside. I haven't, I haven't processed it yet and sanded it down. But uh, that was a pretty cool one too. We'll take a look here at a couple more of the uh, tops here. A little closer look. Got some really nice, nice, beautiful, nice tight stacking going on here. So there we have it. Honestly, I did expect it to get higher. I expected it to stretch quite a bit more than it did. Now, the ones inside also didn't stretch as much as I thought either. So maybe maybe that's just part of this pheno. It just doesn't like to stretch a lot. But either way, I think we're going to get a pretty decent yield out of this. And uh, she looks really good so far. So let's head back inside. All right, so here we are in the 3x3. Three three. This is the Sativa Dominant Pink Kush. Uh, very weak plant throughout all of its life. But it is what it is, and we got what we got out of it. Uh, she is done now. I didn't water last night, so even though she was floppy before, kind of laying it, laying down on the web grow uh, screen unit here. Uh, since I didn't water her yesterday, she's just everything's just flopped over, um, even the ones that were standing up before. But uh, yeah, she is done now. Uh, not super dense. Not a ton of trichomes on her. A little bit of smell now. It did uh, start to produce a little bit of smell during the last week. 
but uh, still just not very good quality now like i said in every video i was going to throw this out when it was a couple of weeks old uh, just because of the state it was in just very weak and uh, small stems small stock uh, everything but where it was leaning towards the sativa dominant side I, I just wanted to grow it out and see what it would be like uh, definitely not a good phenotype but it is what it is so now it's harvest time uh, I'm just going to cut this down quick. I'll probably just turn the camera off, cut it down, hang it up. We'll take a look at it after it's hung up. And uh, that will be the end of the Sativa Dominant Pink Kush. Okay, so I'm just st standing on my deck, guys, here. I just uh, didn't have enough room in there to hold this up. Uh, this is the Pink Kush, Sativa Dominant Pink Kush. That was in the 3x3. Three three. Chopped her down. This is what we got and uh so i'm just gonna go in i'm gonna hang it in my dry closet and uh i'll probably just process this up i'm thinking probably a bubble hash or something um, just to get whatever i can out of it and then uh, that'll be it for that now sometimes when you grow one that's uh, a little bit of a runt or one that's just a little different phenotype or what have you sometimes it turns out great sometimes it just doesn't and we can see how small this stock is here. It's, it's pretty puny all the way up. Um, get my hand up here so you can see. See, it's it's just, it's not very big. But uh, anyway, there she be. And uh, we'll go hang her up. And now we're going to do a bud wash on the pink kush in the 8x8. And here we have in the Mars Hydro 8x8. Last but not least, we have the pink kush in here. Now we've grown this pink kush under the Mars Hydro Smart FC6500, which is controlled by my app, the timer and everything, and the dimming. It's an amazing feature. Uh, we also did use a side light. We used the Mars Hydro FCE4800 as side light, which it's really hard to give an opinion on that because of all the issues that we've had on this grow now i'm sure it did do some good but this plant had so many issues with it it's hard to, to say how effective it was uh with all the issues going on so we will try that again at a later date anyway we've had some major issues with this grow mainly being the spider mites uh, as we can see here we have mite damage throughout the plant i have tried treating it with uh, miticides dr zymes safer's brand even brought in some predator mites which unfortunately i brought them in too late to be much of much good so i did learn from that and that's what i'm chalking up this grow to is a learning experience but she's ready to finally come down now this will be processed we are going to do a bud wash today uh, we have our buckets set up here we have three brand new buckets and uh, we're gonna do a bud wash. But first off, let's take a quick look here at some of the buds. Now, if we look at some of these top buds here, most of the top buds are really, really nice. Nice and frosty, very smelly in here, beautiful smell. And these have some really good density to them, uh, the very tops. Once you start moving down the top, they get a little bit fluffier, but the very tops themselves are really decent. And the mites don't seem to like the trichome, so, uh, I've zoomed in on the tops and the colas, and I don't see any mite activity there, but all over the leaves, there's plenty of mites. So I'm going to wash it all, and uh, we're just going to process this. Uh, we'll probably make it into some butter or oil or something like that. So uh, it's not going to be a loss. But first off, like I said, we are going to do a bud wash on this. I've had people ask me to do a bud wash before, and I've never shown it on the videos. So... Uh, we are going to do it today. So I have everything set up here, ready to go. I have some clippers here to harvest the plant. Uh, I have, in this cup, I have baking soda. I have uh, probably just a little over half a cup of baking soda there. And we have uh, probably just a little over half a cup of lemon juice as well. And of course, a mixing spoon and a towel. This can get pretty messy. If, you're, if you can do it outside, definitely recommend doing it outside. But I'm going to do it in here today. So how does this work? Uh, I have one wash bucket and two rinse buckets. So what we're going to do is we are going to add our vinegar and our baking soda into this bucket. This will be our wash bucket. And then what we will do is we will chop down each branch and we're going to dunk it into the wash bucket. We're going to slosh it around a little bit. I'll show you here in a second. 
and uh, for about 30 seconds or so we're going to slosh it around give it a, agitate it a little bit and what happens is the vinegar and the baking soda when you put them together into the water it it creates a reaction and it causes a lot of little bubbles of carbon dioxide to be released and what that does is it kind of agitates the water and also has cleaning properties so it should lift off any dirt any dead mites anything like that from the plant and leave it in the water now what we'll do at that point we'll take it over we have a first rinse here where we're going to dunk it in here slosh it a little bit this will get most of the garbage off and give it a first rinse and then we'll take it and we'll put it in the final rinse now this water will stay fairly clean these are going to get pretty dirty pretty fast this one will stay fairly clean because they've already been rinsed off uh, this will be our final rinse we'll slosh it around there a little bit and then we'll hang them to dry so like i said that should help take off uh any dead bugs uh any pet hair you can do this for uh, a lot of people do it mostly in outdoor grows or if they have a problem like this with their indoor grow uh, it just takes off some of the grimy stuff now it's not going to hurt you to smoke mites it won't it just won't uh, you won't even know that they're there it, it's like most of the vegetables we we don't even know the amount of bugs that we eat and we don't even notice them but we get grossed out if we do happen to see ones so this is more for uh, just peace of mind so what I'm gonna do is uh, I think I'll, I'll put you up on the tripod for a little bit and we'll dunk a few and uh, we'll show you the process and go from there all right so first off I'm gonna take my baking soda It's kind of cramped in here with this uh, camera so I apologize if I happen to get in the way at all but we're gonna dump that baking soda into the water and we're gonna stir it up really good Now this water for the wash is just lukewarm. You don't want it cold because that'll snap off the trichomes and you don't want it hot because that can affect the trichomes as well. So it's lukewarm. The other two buckets are room temperature. Now the only reason this is a little bit warmer is because anybody that's ever done dishes and tried to do dishes in cold water compared to hot, a little bit warmer water does help with the cleaning process. So we've got the baking soda there. And we're going to dump in the lemon juice. Okay, we can see the bubbles coming up here. I don't know if you can see them from there, but there's a, there's a bunch of tiny bubbles, which is exactly what we want. Okay, so I got just one of these tops here. Um, I'm going to try to do it in as the least amount of uh, cuts possible because it's just easier to hang that way. So we're going to take that. We're going to give it a good dunk here. We're going to put it in the water. We're going to slosh it around. So this isn't going to hurt your trichomes. I mean, you may lose a couple, but not even enough to notice. So we'll give it a good slosh here. Spin it around. I'm not going to be real gentle with it because I want as much stuff off of it as, as we can get. So we're going to give it a good, a good dunk, okay? So about 30 seconds or so and we'll take it out of there we're going to put it in the first rinse and we're going to do the same thing we're going to give it a good slosh try to knock off as much of those uh dead mites and, and any pet hair my dogs aren't allowed in the tent but it's you still get hair in here you bring it in on your clothes and if you have fans running it moves it around so all right so there's our there's our first rinse now you can see even in the the rinse there we got we got a lot of debris in there so now we're going to put it in our final rinse just a quick rinse just to make sure all the baking soda and vinegar is off as well as any any debris so there we are so there we have it we'll shake it off a little bit here and then I'll hang it up okay so there we go uh, now what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm just gonna turn the video off while I do the rest of it and we'll come back and see it hanging up and see what kind of harvest we get out of this girl back in a sec all right so we got her all washed up ready to go 
Uh, made quite a mess in here. The towel down to catch some drips. Uh, but here, we'll take a look here. I only, I didn't change the water because I wanted to see what it would look like after doing the whole plant. And we can see just how dirty that is. Although it was a darker color when we started out because of the lemon juice. But uh, it's much darker and full of particles. And uh, yeah, just pretty gross. And then we come over to the first rinse. And that's quite a bit darker than what it was. A lot of debris in there, small leaves. And uh, this is the final rinse, which you can see is quite a bit, uh, quite a bit lighter in color. So the first rinse got most of the excess off and then just finished up in that one. Uh, so if we, it's hard to get in here because everything's hanging up. Let's see if I can zoom in here. Now we can look at that stock down there compared to the one in the other tent. This one's huge. And it's, it's such a shame that it went through the problems that it went through because uh, that, that could have been a monster, monster plant. Anyway, uh, let's take a look here. It's a little dark up in this corner, but uh, we got it all hanging up here now. Everything is just kind of dripping off a little bit, getting rid of that excess water. Still a fairly decent yield on this, and uh, like I said, some of these, some of these end buds here are really nice. So what I'm going to do is I have my fan tilted up there, blowing on these. I'm going to let them blow for the rest of the day. Uh, also, this one here, which needs a good cleaning, uh, I'm going to let them blow on them almost directly for the rest of the day just to get all this water off and then I'll move these into the drying tent at that point uh, I'm gonna clean up this mess here and instead of cleaning out this tent like I had planned I was gonna scrub it all down I think what I'm gonna do is I think I'm just gonna pack it up get rid of it get a new tent in here and clean off all the equipment really well before I put it back in and hopefully that should take care of the bug problems but this tent I've had it for a few years it's been running non-stop I've had a couple of rats that decided to want to uh, come in and see what the grow was all about. So we got holes down there, uh, which could be taped up. But the floor, the floor is getting pretty ripped up. And uh, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and just buy a new tent. This one, I mean, still has some life in it. But for me, it's just uh, easier for me just to get a new tent and set that up in here and uh, we'll continue on with some new grows in it and i'm pretty excited okay guys so it's really good to be done with those paint cush indoors and it'll be awesome to get rid of this this pest problem uh, and i think the new tent and really good scrubbing and cleaning of all the equipment uh, i think that should really help out and take care of the problem so be sure to come back next week uh, we'll be doing another update on the outside paint cush and also on the new grow, we'll be putting the uh, ethos into their final pots and putting them in the 3x3 three three, and we'll be LSTing the cereal milk next week. So be sure to come back for that. I want to thank Mars Hydro for sponsoring the show. If anybody is interested in any of Mars Hydro's products, which is all I use, feel free to check out the link in the description. And be sure to use my code BWARD to save yourself a little bit at checkout. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I much appreciate it. Like, share, subscribe, leave a comment down below, and we'll see you on the next one. Happy growing.